Okay everyone, we're going to talk about macronutrients. So there's essentially three macronutrients that make up all the foods that we eat. So they are proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And so what we're going to talk about is a little bit of how your body needs and utilizes each one and some common foods that you might find associated with each. So let's talk about protein first. So your body needs protein for a lot of enzyme reactions to build muscle. It's really, really essential that we have enough protein, but it's also important that we don't have too much protein in the diet. So recently in the last year or so, they've done a lot of studies to try and figure out the best combination or how much protein a person should eat per day. Now this also depends on your age. It also depends on your body weight. It also depends if you're working out and you're trying to um, maintain lean muscle mass. So there isn't uh, a one size fits all for protein, but basically they usually use a calculation that would range anywhere from 0.4 to 0.6 grams per pound of body weight. So that's like a rough estimate. So for example, let's say you used 0.5 um, somewhere in the middle. Well, if I'm say 200 pounds, then I would want to shoot for approximately 100 grams of protein per day. So usually when we think of protein foods, it's not necessarily all animal sources, but that would be the common thing that would, people would think about. Animal sources, um, everything from your poultry and your, um, your beef products and your fish, things like that. Those are the more obvious sources of protein, but other things do have protein too. So like nuts and seeds have protein and um, you don't have to consume a lot of animal products to get enough protein in your day. So a lot of times too, I'll use different types of protein powders, but really specific ones. I like collagen protein powders. Often Cindy will put you know, collagen in her coffee. So you can, you can use collagen throughout the day. You can put it in smoothies, things like that. So we don't recommend a high protein diet. In fact, you know, from the from the 80s and 90s, the Atkins diet, that sort of thing, it was already established that while people lost weight using that type of program, having too much protein is definitely not good for your body either. So we want to find a really good balance and understand that it doesn't have to be from all animal sources. So you need enough, but you also have to make sure that you don't have too much. So the other really quick thing about protein is that if you are working out and if you are trying to maintain or build lean muscle tissue, there's, there's a, an approximate number you should try and shoot for after your workout. So if I work out and I lift weights, I should shoot for approximately 30 grams of protein to consume within about 30 minutes after my workout. And the reason for that is once you work out, you're basically breaking down uh, you're breaking down your body, you're breaking down the muscle tissue, and you need something to, to build it back up. So <clears throat> some people will use either a protein powder or they'll consume something with about 30 grams of protein, or you can also do an amino acid, like an essential amino acid blend, which is often what I do right after my workouts as well. So that, that gets um, the amino acids into your body right away, and that can help repair the tissue uh, quickly. So if you are working out, that's what I would do with protein is make sure you have about 30 grams or use essential amino acids right after your workout. Okay, so then let's talk about fats. So it's really important that I, I would say my number one tip with fat is that you're not scared to eat fat. A lot of times people think that if you eat fat, you'll get fat. And we know that that's not true. We have complete other courses that just cover this material. So we can go into, and we have in other areas, gone into depth with this, but what you need to understand with the fats is that there are good fats and there's bad fats. So let's talk about the bad fats first, the ones that you absolutely want to avoid. So we really want to think about trans fats. So really quick, trans fats are, they're a type of fat that they usually use in manufactured foods to help establish a longer shelf life. So they basically, we think of them as plastic. In fact, your body can't break them down. So they're the most dangerous types of fats. Now in Canada, they've really done a good job getting a lot of these out of the foods. They still exist in other countries and in other products, but anything that if you see the word hydrogenated, so if you see the word hydrogenated oil, basically what that means is those fats are trans fats. So they're, they're a chemical form 
that make it really hard to break down so that again the purpose of them from manufacturing is that they in increase your shelf life but it's really hard on your body and they're really really uh, dangerous types of fats so you want to avoid those at all costs. Now there's a lot of debate around saturated fats and are they harmful for everybody and we know that that's not true because there are different cultures around the world where if you think about the Inuit population as an example up to 80% of their caloric load is saturated fats and a lot of those uh, people they don't die from heart disease whatsoever so we know for certain populations saturated fats not dangerous at all um, and in other populations we know that it can be a risk factor so this is a difficult one because there's research on both sides so I've seen research that says you know what you can eat some saturated fats and it's not going to affect it's not going to affect things like your cholesterol levels long term you can eat saturated fats it doesn't put you at any further risk of heart disease and then you'll have um, research that's pushed by say uh, the vegetarian or vegan community that will say it's absolutely connected that you know if you eat saturated fat that that's going to be hard on your body and that's where um, heart disease comes from and there's there's I've literally watched debates between two cardiologists and say one will say saturated fat you know it's fine you can eat some amounts of it and another one says no it's all bad and you can reverse heart disease by taking it out of your diet so I know it's confusing and it, it can be very confusing to consumers so what I've said is okay for most people they can tolerate a certain amount of saturated fats and if you really want to know, there, there are some genetic tests that you can do that would tell you, okay, what, what does your body naturally break down? Is it easy for it to break down or is it really difficult to, to break down? So for my body, I know it doesn't break it down great. So it's one of those things that I say, okay, I don't worry about, you know, not eating any saturated fats. So we eat some saturated fats. If I'll eat eggs and we've measured my cholesterol, there was, a, there was a point in time where I was eating a lot of eggs, my cholesterol levels didn't change at all. So for most people, and I would say about 80% of the population, you can use animal products, you can use saturated fats, and for a lot of people, it's not going to increase your cholesterol and your blood levels over long periods of time. Now there are some people that really do have to watch because their body doesn't break it down, it doesn't process it well. So I would say, you know, for the majority of people that you can eat some, but you don't want to eat too much. So you really want to focus on what the good fats are. So again, saturated fats would be one of those areas that could be, um, it could be argued either way. So examples that I would say that we eat um, some saturated fats would be things like organic butter. So that would be an example of something that I don't shy away from or coconut oil. Okay, so those the coconut oil is a saturated fat, but for most people that's not going to create any types of problems whatsoever. So those are some examples of saturated fats. Then the fats you really want to focus on are things like, I would say olive oil would be one of your best sources of fats and certain nuts and certain seeds. So it's really important with oils that you understand that they become more toxic the more that you heat them. So while nuts and seeds are really good, it's also important to understand that if you eat a lot of roasted nuts and roasted seeds that sometimes the heat that they use to roast them can actually damage some of those fats as well. So you want to be really careful if you're eating a ton of nuts. So nuts can be one of those areas too. They're, they're very high caloric, they're, they're, they're calorically dense. So we want to just keep that in mind that, you know, uh, a handful of nuts is often enough to, to curb the appetite and it's enough to create um, a nice even blood sugar so they make excellent snacks you just want to make sure that you don't eat a pound of them which is sometimes easy to do when they're salted and all that so you want to make sure with fats again that you don't shy away from them you really want to use your best sources are going to be things like olive oil avocados avocado oil so we use those liberally and by liberally I mean, I don't measure. If I make a big salad, I'll take, I'll take olive oil and I'll, I'll not sprinkle, but I'll use it over the, the whole salad and then sometimes just sprinkle a little bit of vinegar and that's enough to make a really tasty dressing. Or if I make a dressing, I won't be shy at all. If I've used olive oil in the dressing, I won't be shy at all to use that in the salad. 
So you want to make sure you have enough fats because really fats are used in all your cell membranes. So you want to make sure that you have enough because if you don't have enough, if you don't have enough fat, they've also done these studies where people that have really low fat diets, they also have higher um, incidence of things like dementia because your brain really needs a certain amount of fat for it to be protective. So don't be afraid of the fat, get trans fats out, try and get all hydrogenated oils out of your diet, try not to eat any really like store made um, products like that would be, you know, sitting in plastic. So any of those like processed treats or muffins or things like that that are already pre-packaged, you want to get those out of your diet as much as you can. You want to include things like olive oil, avocado, avocado oil. Those for sure are safe. You know, if you're eating nuts, if you can eat raw nuts, it's better. Um, things like macadamias are great sources of fats. And if you're really trying to, you know, if you're worried about saturated fats, I would say you can eat some organic butter, coconut oil. I wouldn't worry about those. From um, animal products, you can eat some, but just not too much. So some people would say about 15% um, of your fat intake could be from saturated fat, and that's okay. So the last one we want to talk about is carbohydrates. So this one's really important to understand because I feel for most people, if you manipulate your amounts and the types of carbohydrates that you consume every day, this is where we found in our practice that most people will find the most bang for their buck. So for example, if someone says to me, okay, I really wanna, I wanna lose five to 10 pounds. One of the first things I'll tell them is, or I'll even ask them, okay, well, what do you eat for breakfast? So most people, when, when you think about carbohydrates, most people, when, they're, when you're eating cereal and toast and orange juice and things like that in the morning, it really sets your day up to crave more of those things. So we really wanna be careful about how, it's not that carbohydrates are bad. <clears throat> People ask me that all the time and, and I don't like saying that things are bad, but you have to understand how it affects your body. So it's really important to understand that no matter what you're eating, it has an effect. Is it bad? It depends. It really depends on, on your body's ability to break down sugar. Are you insulin sensitive? Are you insulin resistant? So those are things that really become individual. Do you work out a lot? Are you really active? And the things that are really, I would say, the same for a lot of people, things like sugar or things that break down into sugar quickly are really things that we should try and avoid as much as possible. Now, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect by any means. But it's one of the things that I really think about. Same for kids. If you have kids, this is the area that you really want to be careful. You got to get sugar out as much as we can from the diets because it does set them up um, on a daily level. If you, if you give your you know, kids like a high sugar cereal first thing in the morning, that's like a disaster waiting to happen in their, in their bodies and their brains. So we gotta be really careful about the types of carbohydrates that we consume and also when we consume them. So going back, if someone said to me, okay, I wanna lose five or 10 pounds, I'll often say, okay, do you eat pasta and bread? And they'll be like, yeah. I'll say, okay, well, let's just take those types of things out of your diet. Or I'll say, let's get wheat out of your diet. And then they'll pause and they'll say, wheat? Geez, that's like, everything has wheat. Yeah, exactly. So from your breads, your cereals, to everything that you would get pretty much in a drive through window. So you really, if, if people become serious about um, maintaining ide ideal body weight or getting, trying to shed belly fat, which um, we already know is really, really hard on the body and it creates inflammation in the body, so if we get serious about those things, honestly, carbohydrates become the area that if you focus on those and you really start to understand what foods are hard on your body and what foods that you can tolerate, it will have a massive impact on your body. So what are some good sources of carbohydrates? Well, really, we want to think about vegetables. So all vegetables, and most people don't think about this, this is this was a, an aha moment for me many years ago where I was reading a book from a doctor and he said, think of, when you think of carbohydrates from now on, think about vegetables. Because we often think about starches. We often think about the breads, the pasta, rice, potatoes. That's how most people think about carbs. And I grew up in an era too where people would even, you know, like do 
um, you know, the spaghetti carb up before the big, the big gains and things like that, which nobody really does as much anymore. Um, and thinking how those things were really like necessary and we needed those like the starches. But what we understand now is that the, carb the carbohydrates that we need, they, they can easily be found in things like vegetables. Plus, when you eat the vegetables, you get all the antioxidants, you get the vitamins and minerals, and there's a lot of fiber in vegetables. So often when we think about carbohydrates, we, I, I, a long time ago, I said, okay, let's not think about starches and let's think about vegetables and some fruit. And I'm saying some fruit because some people will say, oh, well, fruit's healthy because it's natural. Well, <clears throat> there's still a lot of sugar in certain types of fruits. And in some of our other programs, we break this down very specifically in terms of what fruits you should eat and what fruits you should avoid. And I would say the same thing here on a general level for thinking about carbohydrates, you really don't want to say, okay, I'm not going to eat any starches and then go ahead and eat all kinds of fruits because fructose is also uh, has an impact on your body. So I often would say if you're going to eat fruits, then try and stick to the berries because they have the lowest glycemic. So things like blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, those types of things. But also understand this is the, the um, double-edged sword. A lot of the berries, things like strawberries, have the highest amount of pesticide residue. So if you're going to eat things like strawberries, you want to make sure that you're eating organic strawberries. And frozen, is it contains just as much nutrients, sometimes more. So you don't want to shy away from frozen fruits or vegetables, it still has the same amount of vitamin C content. And that's what you're after when you're eating the vegetables and the fruits. You want to make sure that you're having lots of antioxidants, lots of minerals, and all the, the vitamins are there. So when you're thinking about carbohydrates in general, if you're trying to lose weight, <clears throat> you really want to get um, wheat out of your diet as much as you can. And so that would be uh, as much of the breads, the pastas, the cereals, trying to get as much of that stuff out. That's usually where people will find the easiest five to 10 pounds just like that in a, in, a, in a month just by taking some of those foods out. And then we want to think about carbohydrates, we want to think about vegetables. And in one of our other programs, we go into the details about thinking about how many grams of carbohydrates would be ideal for your body and how many grams of carbohydrates would each person need, <clears throat> excuse me, would each person need to maintain their ideal weight. And so we do have other programs that talk about that in length. So that's a breakdown of the macronutrients. Hope that's helpful and there's great information coming up.